.NET 5 has finally reached the general availability stage last week during the .NET Conf 2020. Today, I want to talk about it, but more from a DevOps and CI-CD perspective. Let me show you why I think that .NET 5 is perfect for DevOps. Hi everybody and welcome back to Coded Dave. Today we talk about the latest addition to the .NET ecosystem, .NET 5, and we do so from a DevOps and CI-CD perspective. If you've been following the channel for a while, you've probably noticed that most of my examples when it comes to code are written in .NET. And this is because I've been a .NET developer for basically most of my life. And although I'm proficient in other languages like Ruby, Java or Node.js, I still prefer .NET. Although I have to say that especially in the past, .NET was not super friendly in the DevOps world to CI-CD systems and so on and so forth, especially in the .NET full framework flavor. But after using .NET 5 for a while and following its GA, I'm now convinced that it's perfect for all the DevOps and CI-CD scenarios and today I'm gonna show you why. But before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and if you want to learn more about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss my new videos. All right, let's jump into today's topic. Let me start with a brief introduction of what .NET 5 is. If you already know about it, just feel free to skip to the next section using the timestamp you find in the video description. So what is .NET 5? It is a major release of .NET with a broad set of new features and improvements. It is actually already in active use by teams at Microsoft and other companies, both in production and for performance testing. Most importantly, .NET 5 is the first release in the .NET unification journey. It also includes much of the early work so that Xamarin developers can use the Unified.NET platform when .NET 6 will be released. Speaking of which, there will be a major release every year with .NET 6 coming in November 2021 and of course with minor releases if needed. It is worth noting that .NET 5 doesn't fully replace .NET Framework and in fact, the .NET Framework 4X is and will be supported for a long time. And there are no plans to port certain features of .NET Framework to .NET 5 and higher like WinForm, WCF and Windows Workflow Foundation. Also .NET 5 doesn't replace .NET Standard. It will just not be necessary anymore because there won't be different APIs in different flavors of .NET. All the new application can just refer the .NET 5 as target framework and then even the class library can be interoperable with each other. And the same thing would be for .NET 6 and higher versions of the framework. All right, now that we have an overview about .NET 5, let's see why I think it's perfect for DevOps and CI-CD. First of all, .NET in general is one of the most used frameworks. There are more than 2 million active .NET Core developers and more than 5 million active .NET developers and those people will be able to switch to .NET 5 very easily. Also .NET Core, which .NET 5 is the evolution of, is the number one most loved framework according to Stack Overflow in their survey for two years in a row. Furthermore, C Sharp, which is the main language using both .NET Framework and .NET Core, is the fifth most used language on GitHub. Lastly, ASP.NET Core 5 is the number one web application platform by performance in the upcoming Tech Power benchmarks. And this is without mentioning that more than 40% of the developers that are new to .NET are students and that the whole .NET project not only is open source but is one of the projects with the higher velocity. Put all of this together and you will have something truly great for DevOps. Why? Well, because it's a performant framework loved by developers and which is very well known by the community. Your teams will love it and you will not have problems in finding new developers should you want to grow your teams. Speaking about performances, those have been really improved. Not only .NET 5 is over 30% more performant on Socket on Linux over .NET Core 3.1, which performances were already pretty good, but also the JSON serialization performance has been improved about 20%. And for a modern application development, especially when talking about microservices, .NET 5 gRPC performance has been improved so much that now it exceeds the one of Go, C++ and Java. While RPS, requests per second, are important, they are not everything. Most of the time, in fact, the true performance of an application and even the number of machine cores that are needed to run it depend on latency. The team did an incredible job about it as well 
and worked a ton on the garbage collector of .NET 5. And now the latency provided by .NET 5 is the lowest ever provided by any version of .NET Framework and .NET Core. Again, this is great for DevOps and especially for the ops part. Better performances and less latency basically means less machines used in production to sustain your application and hopefully less headaches. And talking about compute, there is now less need for compute during CI as well. The compiler, in fact, is now much more optimized and have greater performances. To prove this, on the right side of the screen here, we have a small project which targets .NET Core 3.1 and it's been built by the compiler that ships with the .NET Core SDK 3.1.404. And on the left side instead, we have the exact same project, but I've retargeted it to .NET 5. And now it's been built by the compiler that ships with the .NET 5 SDK version 5.0.100. As you can see, the difference is massive. The .NET Core 3.1 compiler takes more than two and a half seconds in average to build the solution, while the .NET 5 compiler consistently stay below 0.9 seconds. And in bigger solutions, this difference is even greater. Not only it builds faster, but the resources needed by the compiler in terms of CPU and memory are lower. I think we can all agree that the team did a fantastic job here. Before we move on to even more CICD benefits, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. It will help the channel growing and would mean the world to me. Let's stay in the CICD territory and let's talk about containers. Containers are, of course, one of the most important cloud trends, and the .NET team has significantly invested in them. There are a ton of new features and optimization, even in the lower level of .NET 5, that makes it perfect for running in a container. But probably the most visible one is the optimization of the container images that are provided. As part of .NET 5, the team has rebased the SDK image on top of the ASP.NET image instead of built back depths. And this dramatically reduces the size of the aggregate images you pull in a multi-stage build scenario. As you can see on the screen, the SDK image size has been reduced somewhere between 30 and 65 megabytes. But the biggest improvement here is in the runtime image. If you do this as a multi-stage build, your runtime images will be between 4 and 10 kilobytes only. And this is possible because all the layers you need are already in the SDK image, so you have them already, and therefore you just download and store the manifest. With this change, the ASP.NET pool, for example, will be a no-op, because you will have pulled the ASP.NET layers via the initial SDK pool. This will allow you to save up to 40% of the storage space for your images, and you will see significant size wins for Alpine and Nano servers as well for multi-stage builds. This is so cool. Having smaller images not only means less storage required, but also faster pool and therefore faster startup of your containerized application when they run from scratch. And if you need to run your container on Windows, we now also have the Windows Server Core together with the Nano Server. Which brings me to the next point. .NET Core was already multi-platform, but .NET 5 is even more multi-platform, and in fact, it has the widest OS support of any .NET version before. In fact, it runs on Windows 7 SP1, 8.1 and 10, on both x86 and x64 architectures, and for the first time ever on ARM64. And of course, it supports also the server versions, being able to run on Windows Server and Windows Server Core 2012 R2 and higher, on both x86 and x64, and Nano Server 1809 and higher on x64. On the Linux side, it supports basically all the major distributions, including Alpine, CentOS, Debian, Red Hat, SUSE, Ubuntu and more, mostly on the x64 architecture, but in some cases supporting also ARM32 and ARM64. Finally, it also runs on macOS from the version 10.13 onwards on the x64 architecture. This translates to being able to build a .NET 5 application on virtually any CI agent, whether it's self-hosted or hosted, Windows or Linux, physical or virtual, you name it. And also, you'll be able to deploy your application on any of the above-mentioned platforms for a total flexibility. From a DevOps standpoint, it also means that you and your team will be able to choose the platform you like best and you're more familiar with, and also that gives you more performances and reliability. Also, .NET 5 is already available in both Azure Pipelines and GitHub Actions, so you will be able to build your application with no problem. 
Stay tuned because soon I will have a video explaining how to set up the CI system for .NET 5 in the two CI platforms. Finally, and still talking about CI CD, one of my favorite features, single file applications. Single file applications are built and deployed as a single file in which the application and all its dependencies are all included within that file. Even though single files application were already a thing in .NET Core, their behavior is completely different. In .NET Core 3.1, in fact, all the application and dependencies were packed into a single file for deployment, but then when executing them, that file needed to be unzipped basically and all the dependency read from there. For .NET 5 instead, all the dependencies are read directly into memory from within that file with no performance penalty. This is a big improvement. You can create a single file application using either the command line or tools like Visual Studio. And you can also configure the single file publishing directly in the project file. Remember that in .NET 5, single file apps can be either framework dependent or self-contained. Framework dependent single file apps can be very small by relying on a globally installed .NET runtime on the destination platform. Self-contained single file apps instead are larger due to carrying the runtime, but do not require installation of the .NET runtime as a pre-step and will just work as a result. Why single file applications are great for DevOps? Well, your CD process will thank you. Having to deploy and publish just a single file not only is faster, but also has less latency than uh, multiple files and also the management of that is much easier. If you're thinking, well, I can do the same with a zip file, remember that in .NET 5, single file applications don't need to be unzipped, so it's not actually the same. So to recap, why is .NET 5 great for DevOps? The momentum of the .NET framework and ecosystem is great, and the team worked a lot on performance improvement. .NET 5 is the most performant .NET ever. It is also great for CI/CD because of single file applications, smaller container images, and super fast build time. Finally, it is truly multi-platform, being able to run on Windows, Linux, and macOS, on the x86, x64, ARM32, and ARM64 architectures. All right, that's it for today. Of course, .NET 5 has many other improvements and great features, but what we've seen today are, for me, the most important features when it comes to DevOps and CI/CD. Let me know in the comment section below what your favorite features of .NET 5 are and if you agree with me that it's perfect for DevOps. .NET 5 has finally reached the GI. It's perfect for DevOps. Perfect. Using the timestamp, you think, you think. The developers that are new to that, that, that. Comes down to latency. 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 It will help the channel growing. The channel. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.